Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MacTube. In this video, we are going to learn about coplanar lines. And we are going to learn case 1, that means both the lines are in symmetric form. Remember, in your examination, coplanar lines and shortest distance are very very important. And there are two cases in coplanar and there are two cases in shortest distance and we will learn all these things in four videos so make sure you watch the video and practice a lot 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 of similar problems because in the video we will learn only one problem so are you ready with your pen and paper so let's start point number one the equations are given in symmetric form and when equations are given in symmetric form you can find the direction ratios by looking at the denominator. I will make it A1, B1, C1 and A2, B2, C2 so that you can see that uh, the direction ratios are different. It looks different. Now point number one, if lines are parallel then the direction vectors are same or multiples. Something like 1, 2, minus 3 and a multiple of this. Maybe I multiply throughout by 5, 5, 10, minus 15. Or the ratio 1 by 5, 2 by 10, minus 3 by minus 15 are equal. So the first thing you have to do is check whether the lines are parallel. If they are parallel, end of the story, they are coplanar. Because two lines which are parallel, look, two lines which are parallel will be always, always coplanar. You can always keep it in a plane. Two lines, if they are parallel, it looks parallel, I guess. Yeah, two lines, if they are parallel, they can be always kept in a plane. Now, the second possibility is the lines are intersecting. If the lines are intersecting, then there will be a common point. Also, it will be in a common plane. Something like one line goes inside the other line. Something like this. And uh, by the way, lines are like very thin. You have to imagine something like a string. So if the lines are intersecting, then also there will be a common plane. Now, the third possibility is very interesting and it happens only in three dimension. That is, one line will be above the other. Can you see? One line is above the other. I'll make you understand this very easily. Imagine you are living inside a cuboid. Just like a room like this, a normal room. Imagine you are drawing a line on the roof another line on the floor in another direction just like this can you see one is coming towards the camera and one is moving in this direction they will never ever meet and they are called skew lines but there is one interesting thing about the skew lines at one point the distance between them will become very short and that is called shortest distance okay now let's go quickly to the method Okay, I was going through the YouTube analytics and I found that almost 60% of the viewers are not even subscribing. So it'll be very nice if you can encourage us by subscribing and supporting us. I hope you copied the question. So point number one, we're going to convert this into parametric form. Anyway, this is obvious that the directions are not proportional. So they are not parallel. Now there are two possibilities. Either they will intersect or they are skew. Okay, so the first thing to do, convert it into parametric form. I'm sure you have watched the videos previously. You know how to convert lines into parametric form. Now look at the interesting part. When we have two intersecting lines, there will be a common point. And can you see, in line 1, I wrote the parametric form with the variable t. That means when I plug in different values for t, t equal to 1, t equal to 0, t equal to 5, I will get different, 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 different points on the first line. Similarly, when I keep different values for s, I will get different points on the second line. But can you see the common point? So I am going to write, if they intersect, I am not guaranteeing they are intersecting, I am telling you, in case they intersect, Come on, at the intersection, this will be equal to this, this will be equal to this, and this will be equal to this. 
and we get three equations. Can you see? We get three equation which I am going to write like this. Take everything to one side and keep the constants on the other side. Now you take a calculator and solve any two. Normally everyone solves the first two. I also did that once more. Use a calculator, don't waste your time. Because when you do engineering and higher mathematics, we don't care about these simple things. Use a calculator, solve it. I got t equal to 2, s equal to 1. Comment below if the answer is correct. Okay, so I got t equal to 2 and s equal to 1. Now what I did is, I took this t value and s value and I'm plugging it here. 8 multiplied by 2, 16. Minus 7 multiplied by 1, 7 is equal to 9. Oh, that's true. That means I am able to find a value of t and s which can balance all the equations. And what does it mean? It means there is a common point because I told you, I started like this. I started like if they intersect or if there is a common point. So I am able to find the common point. Now it's like so simple. Either you put t equal to 2 in the parametric form. So it will be 2 into 2 plus 1. Or you put s equal to 1 here. You will get the common point. So very simple. Convert the equations into parametric form. And then write the dialogue. If they intersect. There is no guarantee. If they intersect what will happen. You will get 3 equations. Solve them. Make sure all the equations are balanced by the value. Put it back and you will get the common point. So, now, if two lines are parallel, then it will lie in a common plane. If two lines intersect, they will lie in a common plane. But if two lines are one above the other, they can never be kept in a common plane because they are skew. Okay, now, the common plane is given by a formula. You don't have to think too much about it. If you are learning bachelors in mathematics or major mathematics, you need to worry about how you got this. But for the applied students, it's just a formula. So we take the numerator of one of the line. I took the first line. I'll show you. Look. The numerator, the denominator, the denominator, and I got one determinant. Can you see the determinant? And expand the determinant. I hope you're good in expanding. And we get the common plane. That's it. So I want you to practice similar problems. So I hope you understood the method. I'll be back soon with another video in which we will discuss case 2. So till then my friends, bye.